In this interview, we discuss vaping in Malaysia, its popularity, and the movement to save it through pragmatic regulation. We speak with Samsul Arafin from MOVE about the challenges he faces as a consumer advocate for tobacco harm reduction in Malaysia. I, I was a smoker. I was a smoker uh, since I was 15. And I tried everything to quit smoking from, from nicotine patch and, and, and nicotine gum and nothing seems to work. Until one day I saw a friend of mine who posted something on, on, on Facebook, this contraction of something lit something really strange and I contacted him and asked him what's that about and he said this is these are vapors so we met and I tried and from that point on six years ago I've never smoked again. That's pretty impressive. How did you get involved in advocacy? Was it because you found something that worked for you and you wanted to share it? If you could just elaborate on that. Right, um, it is a quite an interesting story. What happened was because um, I quit smoking from the first day I tried vaping. So yeah. I thought that this is something which is, um, that can be helpful for many people. Did you not in fact recommend banning vaping all those years ago? And it so happens that about five years ago, uh, the government of Malaysia announced that they are going to have a blanket ban over uh, any use of vape products. From the point when I, I started vaping, I was quite active in the, in the uh, social media scene, um, uh, in the Facebook groups of, of, of people who use vapes. And um, so then, when we heard that uh, uh, vape industry is going to be banned, I uh, wrote in all my friends who are in social media to, to uh, launch a petition so we started off an on online movement and also an online petition to, to make sure that the government do not uh, ban vape. So we got about 50,000 support from the wow. online petition. Yeah, yeah. And we handed over to the, to the deputy prime minister. Hmm. Yeah, so that got a lot of attention and until to the point that um, the matter was raised in, in the parliament. And they, from, from that point on, they did not actually ban vape here in Malaysia. So that's what happened. All right. So would you say that your advocacy is mainly an online social media advocacy? Or do you have advocacy and activities that you do outside of the internet? Like, do you attend meetings with public health officials? Do you meet with government representatives? How does that work in Malaysia? Uh, the issue here in Malaysia is, I'm not too sure how it is in other countries, but here in Malaysia, it is not so much of a health issue when it comes to vape. It is more of a political issue. All the vaping retailers, they get scared because of, they don't know what, what will be happen in the future. Is it will be banned or not? I'll definitely stop smoking and keep on vaping and maybe I'll go for underground. If it is a health issue, then of course it can be solved easily. But we know that it is not a health issue. So having said that, and with the understanding that it is not really a health issue, it is a political issue, we have to address the matter at that level. So the engagement has been, uh, yeah, we have extensive engagement with the uh, government agencies. And besides that, we do organize um, uh, awareness uh, campaigns and gatherings uh, for MOVE members. And the last one that we had, uh, we had about 2,000 people, close to 2,000 people who attended our event. Okay. And we gave them all MOVE um, uh, t-shirts for free. So this is when we handed over the memorandum to, to the government uh, and we showed them that um, we do have a healthy number of people who really want to keep smoking and instead of them ban banning it, they should give a small support. Do you find that the government, I don't know if the government of Malaysia follows similar patterns to other countries in Asia Pacific, some mm -hmm. of the countries, I would say most of the countries, follow mm -hmm. the WHO FCTC to right. the letter and their recommendations. Right. Um, and in some of those countries, there's no discussion that this is the way it's going to be. Is Malaysia right. like that as well? Yes, it is. It is much more to the lead later. It's not really, um, they do, do not really subscribe to whatever that is uh, put forward by WHO. We need simple solutions. 
and strong enforcement to protect our people. It's a smoking alternative that's marketed as a healthier way to give up the habit. But e-cigarettes, or vapes as they're known, are creating a health controversy across Malaysia. So here, the situation is much more, how should I put it, um, volatile. Okay. You know? All right. So it can be pro uh, vape at one point and it can be against it at one point. Uh, again, it, it all, it's a matter of, of uh, political will of who is sitting at that position at that time. Kita, kita tengok kawan-kawan kita ada bagi cadangan. Okey lah, satu ya. Vape, haram. Uh, what the kerajaan should do is to find out a solution how to guide these smokers to stop smoking. That is more important. And if I were to to describe the situation here in Malaysia, I would say that um, they they do put a lot of effort in in harm reduction, tobacco harm reduction. Yeah, yeah, but. You know, they have a budget of uh, tens of millions of ringgit per annum for tobacco harm reduction. Yeah, no doubt. But it is only for pharmaceutical products. Okay. Right? Not yeah. really for anything else than that. So that could also be a, a challenge for us. How many smokers are in Malaysia? Well, um, we do not have a solid statistics on that, but I would say about 3.5 million people. Okay. And how many vapors are in Malaysia? About 700,000. Okay. So it's a very small cohort from the greater populations, which leads me to my next question. Yeah. How do people in Malaysia outside of the government, just general population, how do they view tobacco harm reduction? How do they view vaping? Well, it uh, depends on who you who you are asking, mm. right? There's a full spectrum of, of opinions when it comes to vaping. And of course, these opinions are also shaped by the media. There's a new threat concerning vaping. There was yet another death connected to the use of e-cigarettes. Cherry Crush. The device has now hooked countless teenagers. There were a point where um, it is viewed quite negatively because uh, the media pick it up and uh, spin it in a way that vaping is uh, worse than than smoking and you know it is made available to uh, children at school and uh, you know it is related to drugs you know so yeah i mean you right, know so it's, a, it's the same battle everybody's fighting throughout the region it's they, these things are planted in the media and they don't want to listen to reason and evidence they emotional they go for the emotional impact of everything right based on that so from the first point when we started off um i was put on a spot where i debated the president of the uh, medical doctors association here in malaysia on live tv speaking about 1.5 million people was viewing that and and the strategy that we we adopted from the very beginning was okay. let's talk about uh, what's uh, factual uh, let's go on facts so that's where you know we are we are, we can win because they have been putting out of uh putting out information which are totally not factual at all so when we put in uh, the strategy that we just want to stick on facts um we we uh gotten a lot of points from them yeah that the science says speaks for itself that's right. And as time goes on, more and more of the evidence comes out. It's just a matter of getting people to acknowledge it and accept it. Many pro-vaping advocates say that this is to help people stop smoking. And yet there are a lot of young people and people who've never smoked before taking this up because they think it's cool and safe. And it's neither. What do you see as the future for tobacco harm reduction using safer nicotine products going forward in Malaysia? Do you see that that may become part of the toolkit or do you see that it's going to be a battle royale for the next five to ten years it's not going to be easy it's not going to be easy but i don't think there's any there's no going back to this you see we are in a unique situation where um the consumer are much more knowledgeable about the subject matter than the policy makers yes all right so um, both of these parties have to come together and work together so that 
we can come up to a solution. So the dilemma that we are in for me uh, and for MOVE is that we want to push for regulation, yeah, but mm -hmm. if we push too hard, then they might go uh, and adopt an over-regulated uh, approach. That's not what we want as well. Right. So there's always a balancing game of, you know, we want it, we want it to be regulated, but we do not want it to be over-regulated. And uh, I don't see, coming back to your question again, I don't see that there's, um, there's a turning back from this point. We are going forward and harm reduction is definitely the way to go. I changed from cigarette, I changed to vaping. They're the starting point where I start to stop smoking. After two years, two years. I stopped for real. After two years of vaping. So, <laughs> congratulations to myself. <laughs> My final question for you then is if someone was interested in getting involved in advocacy for this in Malaysia, uh -huh. Right. What would you say to them? What would be your advice or your guidance for them? It's not going to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, we are, you know, going against a, a formidable um, opponent, which is people who are in power and the authority. And um, you need to put a lot of your effort and time and you're not going to get, get paid for it. So, you know, bear that in mind. You know, and the thing is, the, the truth is that, but if you are passionate about the belief that this is something that can actually save lives, yes. then by all means do it.